Houston Rockets fans, how does it feel to be the winners of the NBA draft for two years in a row? I mean, last year, you guys had an amazing draft. Honestly, though, looking back, I don't know. Okay, so you got Jalen Green. Jalen Green, an absolute stud, you know, top four player in the draft so far. He could easily, you know, be one of the best. He's already shown amazing scoring potential. You got Sengun at 17. Sengun's looking like a stud. He can play make. He has a potential to get a three-point jump shot at seven foot. He's already shown good rim protection. I'm not really sure what his ceiling is, but I definitely think he could be good enough to be kind of like a third, fourth kind of guy at least in the future and then at 20 i think i believe it was 23 and 24 you got garuba and you got josh christopher christopher has shown good signs garuba and I'm, I'm gonna be honest looking back i've kind of gained new philosophies for the nba draft and i've kind of gained this philosophy and shout out pb the plug when it comes to this draft stuff like i really go to him um to his channel and his uh social media to learn a lot of things about draft and just knowledge and all that and honestly i believe you know he has a saying that less is more and i, I just completely agree when you look back the Rockets had four first round picks that they picked last year. And looking back, that is a bit too much. I mean, four first round picks all in the first like 24 is a bit crazy, you know, because Garuba really didn't get the minutes because Christian Wood was on the team. Jay Sean Tate was on the team. Kenyon Martin Jr. was on the team. Garuba really didn't get the minutes to shine. And, you know, in the minutes he got, he wasn't very good. But you can't just give some guy like 10 minutes per game. Uh, who was a lottery not a lottery pick a first round pick and it just expect him to do the best that he can like you have to really get into rhythm when you're in the nba you're going against players who have been there for 10 plus years it's, it's just it's hard to get into rhythm in 10 minutes a game so you know maybe looking back they could have packaged 23 and 24 to maybe draft higher in the draft or trade up for a higher pick but i mean all that's done now yeah gruba um not really that good of a rookie season but josh christopher did all around last year was a good draft and this year i think it's going to be the same thing by the way, I'm going to make these winning the draft videos like a series. I'm probably going to do like 10 of them because there's just so many teams that did the right thing in the draft that I want to highlight. So subscribe to stay tuned because there are just there's just so many winners. Look, if you've been watching my videos, you know that I wanted Orlando to pick Vancaro and I wanted I guess I didn't really say it, but I wanted Houston to get Jabari Smith Jr. I think both of these players better fit on the teams they were drafted to. Uh, rather than the teams that they were projected to be drafted to like a week ago or even two days ago. Even yesterday morning, Woj said that it was almost official that the Magic were getting Jabari Smith Jr. and that the Rockets were getting Bancaro and that the Thunder were getting Chet. And that just was not true. So it's kind of weird. But yeah, for the Magic, I like a guy who can be a potential number one scoring option in Bancaro, just all around an offensive weapon. And the Magic already have defensive pieces around uh around Bancaro to be a good enough team and for the Rockets I think that you know Jalen Green is already that number one scoring guy but can potentially average over 26 27 points per game I think he really has that potential so putting Jabari Smith next to him there's a lot less pressure to score and more pressure on being better at just having an all-around better game when we talk about defense playmaking handle shot creation rebounding you know all these things Jabari Smith can be way more versatile on the Rockets than he would have been on the Magic. But yeah, I really do like Jabari Smith next to Sengun. Sengun, you know, I see a lot of playmaking potential in him. He, he made like, last year, I, I wanna put it on the screen, one of the craziest passes I've ever seen, at least from a center. So if Sengun can create a bunch of open looks for Jabari Smith Jr., I think that'd be so good because you know jabari smith was a, a player in auburn who just made a lot of tough shots he's a tough shot maker i kind of compare him to like tatum I, I don't think he's i'm not projecting him or predicting he'll be as good as tatum but you know just in the way that they kind of play i mean he doesn't create space he just he creates enough space for a shot where he can make it but he's not like a guy who'll create open shots but if sengun kevin porter jr has shown good uh playmaking potential if they can get jabari smith enough open looks there's no reason why jabari smith jr can't be a multiple time all-star and maybe you're wondering for top three pick you know should i be thinking about calling him a future superstar I, I don't really see it and that's why i think the rockets still need to continue to rebuild i kind of have this philosophy of once you find your two stars who have like really good superstar potential that's when you end the rebuild that's why i think the rockets should still continue maybe try and get scoo henderson or victor webanyama so then once you get that big three that's when you kind of trade the rest of your pieces and create a good team around them yeah i think the rockets can really speed up this rebuild obviously though not yet and they have to win the lottery next year to do that so let's not get ahead of ourselves but yeah jabari smith jr the ultimate pick and roll slash pick and pop weapon you don't know what he's gonna do he's elite at both of them he just has great athleticism and he's great and he's like really fast so he's gonna be able to guard the perimeter and i really like that you know as long as they really believe in sengun he can be that five because i don't see jabari smith being a small ball four maybe if he you know gains some weight after a couple years maybe like five or six years he could be a small ball five but for now you put him at the four even closing games and honestly there's a lot of power forwards in today's game that are just really small like you know you look at jay crowder you look at royce o'neal or bojan bogdanovich whichever whichever one you think plays the four and jabari smith could kind of just shoot over those players so i really like him at the power forward position and yeah i feel like bancaro would have really clashed with jalen green's game so i really like how complimentary because i think 
that what makes a player good yes skill talent all that makes a player good but being in a good fit in a good system that really complements your play can really put your game over the top yeah all around i think this is a very good duo jalen green and jabari smith jr and overall if he developed correctly i could definitely see him being a future all-star i saw him getting comparisons to kevin durant i think it was kendrick perkins who was saying him just so idiotic i mean it's pretty crazy and annoying I, 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 that kind of expectation should be put on absolutely no one not even the first pick in the draft but i could definitely see him having a Marcus Aldridge type career. So it was pretty obvious that all three of Paulo, Chet, and Jabari were going to be in the top three, but this next pick could have been a whole bunch of different players. But when the pick was in, I was telling myself that the Rockets should be drafting Tari Eason, and they did. And I am so happy. I think it's such a great fit. I think it's just it's a huge win. And when you look at positional need, Jay Sean Tate, he's a good player, and he's he's been playing the small forward or, or power forward or something. Uh, but he's not exactly on the same timeline as the rest of the Rockets' main core. You know, he's like a 26 i'm pretty sure he was in the rising was he in the rising stars game he, he, he was in some sort of like young event um at his age which was pretty crazy and then also you look at the overall team need and it is defense now i was once again i'll shout out peewee to plug uh, i was watching one of his videos and he said that the rockets at this pick should go nikola jovich they should go all in on offense 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 and just focus on the defense later when they decide to want to win and i think that's a fine philosophy but i think that defenders in the nba are just so valuable and i think you should just get them as soon as you can as often as you can because they like when you look at these players like Macau Bridges and Herb Jones, they're not going to be easy to trade for if they were open to the trade market. And then you compare them to like a Tim Hardaway Jr. I feel like Tim Hardaway Jr. would be like an easy player to draft for, even though he's such a, or sorry, trade for, even though he's just such a good offensive talent. And trust me, it, it hurt me to say this because I love Nikola Jovic. I think he easily should have been a top 20 pick, but to the Rockets, I disagree. Also, me saying all this, uh, the exception is Matisse Thibel. I feel like Matisse Thibel is such a good defender, but has absolutely no value because just his offense is so hard to watch. But this is not the case for Tari Eason. Because Tari Eason, along with being a good defender, he has really good length for a small forward. He could guard pretty much the one through four. I don't think he can guard fives. I've seen people say he can guard fives. I haven't really seen it. But yeah, six foot eight with a seven two wingspan, has the length, shot 36% from three in college. I think it was in about like two and a half attempts per game so yeah not really too much volume but if you can keep that same efficiency that's like what league average maybe a little bit below by now because i think 36 percent was league average like four years ago there's no way it's the same but honestly i wouldn't expect him to have that you know good three-point efficiency in the next couple years just for the reason that yeah the rockets really lack space creation you know players who can create a play or create space for the other team or the other teammates so he's not really going to get that many open looks but maybe by like year three or four if you can have that three-pointer down that would be amazing and he also shot 52% from two, so that's pretty good. Just all around a good prospect. But yeah, getting Tari Eason here, it really does hurt Garuba's stock. So I'm once again going to say, I I just believe that he might he might be out of the league in a couple of years, or he might just be maybe mainly in the G League. I, I don't know. There's just too many mouths to feed. Because yeah, bringing in three more guys to be part of the team, while the roster is increasing, or the amount of players, the young players uh, in the roster is increasing, the amount of minutes in a game for these players are staying the same if you're catching my drift. Like these players you want to develop last year, they're going to get even less minutes if you're bringing in Jabari Smith and Eason and Ty Ty Washington. And this is even with, you know, getting rid of Christian Wood. Getting rid of Christian Wood was supposed to bring out a lot of opportunity of, or minutes for the Garubas, for the Kenyon Martin Juniors, and it's not really doing that. Yeah, Usman didn't get to play much until Christian Wood started sitting out games, and now Jabari Smith's just coming in and replacing that. That's <laughs> I'd be pretty annoyed, but he's only 20 years old. So that's the only kind of knock that I'd have for the Rockets draft, at least this year. I actually would have liked to see them trade up a pick instead of trading down, but you know. At the end of the day, get the prospects that you want. And for the Rockets' final pick, at pick 29, they get P... I was about to say PJ Washington, Ty Ty Washington, and two second round picks. So that's really good. I mean, I saw so many mock drafts that had the Houston Rockets picking Ty Ty Washington at 17, and they didn't really need to get him that high after all. I think it's an overall win. I mean, you just look at the positional need. They need a point guard, you know. I don't think they're really trying to get rid of Kevin Porter Jr. as soon as possible, but if they could find a point guard for the future that isn't him, I mean, there's just been so many locker room problems and maybe it's all just been uh, inflated by the media. Maybe it's not really that big of a deal, but he had the same problem in, in Cleveland. So I, I don't know. And then when you talk about talent, I mean, this guy was an absolute stud in college. I feel like a lot of mocks had him going near the lottery. So getting him at 29 is pretty good. And when it comes to Ty Ty, the first thing I want to say is that Kentucky guards rarely miss. I mean, when we look at the last Kentucky guards to be drafted in the first round, 
Tyrese Maxey was a clear steal at 23. You know, he dropped so low and just had an absolutely great season this year. Emmanuel quickly was four picks later, just a solid role player in his second year in the NBA. I feel like he could still be something really good in the future. The year before that, Tyler Harrow, you know, sixth man of the year, absolute stud. The year before that was Shea Gilgis Alexander, definitely a future all-star and I think probably a future all-NBA player. The year before was De'Aaron Fox, another future all-star. And then also Malik Monk, solid scorer. Before that was Jamal Murray and then Devin Booker. And the last time that a Kentucky guard in the first round missed was James Young eight years ago, who's, you know, I don't even think he's in the league. So I think it's pretty safe to say that picking Kentucky guards is not a mistake. I think Ty Ty has shown a good signs of shooting. He has a motor on defense. He has an elite floater, which I think right now is very important in today's game. All he really needs is his handle or, or explosiveness to get better so he can create more space for his teammates and himself, which is not an ideal weakness when you realize that that's like the weakness for a lot of Rockets players. But if he improves on that, I don't see why he can't be a sixth man or a future starting point guard. With a new core of probably Kevin Porter Jr., Jalen Green, Tari Eason, Jabari Smith Jr., Alfred Sengun, Ty Ty Washington, Josh Christopher, Uzman Garuba, Kenyon Martin Jr., Jay Sean Tate, and probably maybe if they bring him back, Bruno Fernando. This is a very solid core for being the only second year into the rebuild, which is crazy when you look at, you know, how long Detroit's been bad, and how long the Kings have been bad, how long the Magic have been mediocre, and, you know, the Rockets are already coming back with an amazing core. I could definitely see the Rockets being back into playoff contention within two to three years. This year, all the Rockets need to do is develop. I want to see jumps from everyone. I want to see Jalen Green take an Anthony Edwards type jump, you know, maybe get better on defense, playmaking, you know, being a more consistent shooter and scorer. Sengun, I want I want him to, you know, playmake a lot more. I want him to have a lot more opportunity. I want him to get his three-point shot. I want him to be a better rim protector. I want Kevin Porter Jr. to prove that he should be the starting point guard. I want Jabari Smith to win Rookie of the Year, and I want to see all of these things happen. If you enjoyed the video, please help me out and like it, and you'll probably enjoy my other NBA-related content on the channel, so subscribe, and also comment what kind of video I should make next, and peace.